We finally got more Marvel's Avengers info, like the first information since the delay announcement from May 15th to September 4th. We learned there's actually early access now and we got some new outfits and pretty sick but the achievements for this game that is out in 7 months already leaked. And I will not go over the story spoilers but I will touch on the many new gameplay details that are quite interesting. And yes we have some new footage too. I am kind of worried though after seeing that new footage. I already got to play the game at Gamescom last year and that was great but will there be enough variety when the game comes out? So yes, a ton to discuss, a like on the video would be super appreciated, and let's go! If you haven't participated in my February giveaway for a 2020 game of your choice, then there is still time to do it by following the link in the pinned comment for a chance to win, and be sure you are a subscriber of the channel as well before you enter. I will announce the winner on March 1st. And yes, you can of course pick Marvel's Avengers, and then you also get the pre-order bonuses that are actually pretty cool. It namely includes the Marvel Legacy Outfit Pack with an outfit for each hero. And as the name suggests, those are the iconic first outfits that each hero wore. My favorite is the Iron Man armor and Reddit user Revolution Doctor photoshopped this one in the outfit selection menu. Looking pretty sweet. And as you likely know, the outfits do not impact the power of your character, they are just cosmetic. And we actually see the legacy outfit from the Hulk in action in the short pre-order trailer that was released, also looking pretty good in game. If you pre-order you also get the legacy nameplate, so that will be shown in the menu as you see right here. Maybe other players will also see it when you group up or something. And if you pre-order then you also get the online beta access, but good to note is that the PlayStation 4 owners will have an early beta, so before Xbox One and likely PC. And then I would not be surprised if there was another beta after the PS4 exclusive one, but for all platforms. And normally these types of games also do an open beta right before launch as well. So I think we can already expect a beta for this game in July or early August at the latest. And then more of these betas as we near the release on September 4th or actually the release on September 1st. Because yeah, in true AAA games fashion, it gets even more complicated. Okay, not Ubisoft complicated, and this Odyssey sheet does not even include all the physical collector's editions that that game had. Still though, Marvel's Avengers has a deluxe edition that is pretty straightforward. So you have a 72 hour early access, so they can start playing on Tuesday instead of Friday. You get the Obsidian outfit pack that basically includes recall of the original outfits for each hero with black, white, grey and gold. I still think it looks great for Thor and Captain America though but it's less exciting than the legacy pack for sure. And you also get some golden nameplates. But there's also an exclusive PlayStation bundle that you can only get in the PlayStation Store and that is $10 less than the regular deluxe edition. But it still includes the early access and an exclusive Miss Marvel nameplate and thousand credits so that seems to be the microtransactions currency and you would think that thousand credits is basically ten dollars right they will support the game with free additional heroes and levels post launch but they will sell specific outfits for each hero for these credits and i'm kind of worried that the coolest outfits from endgame or the other movies that everyone wants will be behind this paywall because they already confirmed that we cannot earn these credits without paying, so there's no activity in the game that let us earn credits as well. So I don't hope that the prices for these skins are super high, although high chance looking at prices for cosmetic items in other games. Fingers crossed that there's a good balance and that we can earn many cool outfits by doing challenging content in the game. So you can really see, oh this person cleared this mission and now has this cool armor. The thing that also kind of worries me right now is the marketing, or actually the new trailer they just released. So they delayed the game back in January and actually the last trailer we had before that was in October. And now they release a new trailer that just rehashes a lot of footage that we've seen multiple times already. Like it starts with Bruce 8 day jump turning into the Hulk and then for the first 30 seconds it's all footage that we already know. After that though we see Miss Marvel versus AIM robots and I think that this is the mission before we get the helicarrier that will function as our hub. 
like we see parts of this mission in the previous trailers already. And if we go back to this pre-order trailer, we see more footage of a single player mission with Miss Marvel. And then we basically have a compilation of some combos. Did they change the sleeves from the enemies in this Captain America 8A footage? Like, I, I don't remember them being that wide, right? Like, this is the footage from the 8A demo they previously released. And then we see Thor use some sort of teleporter. This looks like a single player mission with the Hulk. And then we see a snowy planet with Black Widow closing the gap and approaching the enemy. And this looks pretty awesome, Ms. Marvel and the Hulk nuking some robots in a Warsaw mission that you can play alone or with up to four players. But then we get to the final bit, like we see Iron Man flying, awesome. But they now seem to be ending all these trailers with these spider tank robots. Like this was the ending of the gameplay overview trailer they showed. Yes, the same tank. I'm just afraid that we will have to fight those tanks many, many times over, mostly at the end of those Warzone missions. Like in the Ant-Man tease at E3, we saw them spawn like everywhere in the background. So are we just fighting a lot of these robots over and over again? These enemies kind of remind me of the Destiny tanks that they showed for the first time at the end of the E3 2013 gameplay reveal. And well, turned out those bullet spongy enemies were part of a lot of missions. There should at least be 20 different enemy types though, looking at the, the best defense achievement that says defeat any 20 different enemy types. And you would think that they mean like different enemy archetypes, so that could be like five different aim robots, and then we of course have the humanoid enemies as well. 20 sounds okay, pretty great if they all behave very different from each other. And then we also have many achievements about ranking up, like reach power level 300 with any hero, reach Avenger rank 250, reach hero level 5 with 5 different heroes and reach hero level 50, likely the max level, and purchase all the skills for any hero. So this seems to confirm that we can unlock all the skills for one hero, which is nice. And we of course saw the skill line already a little bit in the gameplay overview trailer. So we'll be ranking up in many ways, maybe too many ways, but that's hard to say at this point. There's also a faction rank, because for one achievement we have to reach faction rank 25 in any faction so there seem to be factions in this game because we also have purchase an item from two different faction vendors and complete 10 priority faction missions so i think that by doing these priority faction missions you earn points toward that faction and then the higher your rank the more exclusive items you can buy from their vendor pretty typical in these types of games I'm just curious if these factions really have some background and really sell some awesome items. My favorite type of achievements or trophies, and we're now discussing the achievement list, but it will be similar to the trophy list as always. No, but there are quite a lot of challenging trophies, like reach a combo of 20 hits or higher, defeat 10 or more enemies with a single heroic ability activation, earn a 5 star rating on an objective without any team members taking damage, like you really have to coordinate for those. Earn a 100% rating on a mission without any team member being downed. So after being downed, you can likely be revived by your teammates, but here for this trophy, you do not have to get in that state at all. We already saw the war table menu where we could select a difficulty for each mission and there seem to be quite some difficulties that we can select. For the holding a down achievement, we have to complete 30 war zones on brutal or higher difficulty. And for the best around, we have to earn a 100% rating for any war zone on the merciless difficulty. And that looks to be the hardest difficulty. So yes, replaying missions will be a big part of this game from the looks of it. And these difficulties should make these missions more varied when you return. Hopefully they do not only increase the health or damage from the enemies, but a little bit more. We got two more challenging achievements. For one, we have to complete any mission in under three minutes. Or for the old fashioned beat down, we have to defeat any boss without any strike team member taking damage. Like trophies like this are really fun to chase. There will be cash strong boxes in the game, we have to open 50 of them for one achievement and also a hundred of them 
for the surprise every time achievement. They already confirmed at E3 that there will be no loot boxes or pay to win scenarios in this game. So I think these strong boxes are like loot chests we find in the missions that can contain gear. Other interesting achievements are for the so-called hive missions. We have to complete 5 and 50 for another achievement. We have to rescue 100 aim prisoners and break into 30 depots. And there are also trophies and achievements that you get while playing through the single player story that I will not show but if you get a trophy at the end of every single player mission then we're looking at 15 missions in total and during these missions you have a pre-selected hero so you cannot choose yourself the 8 day prologue was like 15 20 minutes so if all the missions take around that time to beat then we're looking at a five hour campaign but again pure speculation it will likely be more than that and there are quite some interesting achievements that show some awesome plot twists and things we can expect in the game again i will not mention them here but i will leave a link to all the achievements in the video description for if you want to see them for yourself but be warned there are major spoilers so i would recommend that you do not look but you can of course make that choice for yourself i still have high hopes for this game like i really like crystal dynamics as a developer like the tomb raider reboot from 2013 was amazing and again what i played at gamescom last year was very fun so i just hope that we see more new footage of this game soon that show the different layers that this game has and not just the same stuff over and over again. So I will totally be keeping an eye out and report back when we know more. So totally subscribe for way more Marvel's Avengers content. Like this video to support the channel and check out my previous video on why we could see a new Star Wars game this year as well. Follow me on social media, all your raptor, and I will speak to you next time. Goodbye.